Let's take the time again just to settle down and notice where we are. And just try and relax. This doesn't have to be hard work. If it feels like anything, it should feel like a relief or release. There's nothing we have to do. There's nothing we have to get. If you think there's something you've got to do, and if you think there's something you've got to get, that's exactly what's happening. That you're thinking there's something you have to do. And you're thinking that there's something you have to get. So that's thought. And as your mind and your body quietens down, thought becomes less important, it becomes less relevant. Whenever you're confused, whenever you're not sure what to do, whenever you're not sure what practice to do, whenever you're not sure of what teaching is correct, when you're not sure of things, you can just stop and relax. and allow the mind to quieten down and become aware of what's happening in the body, in the mind, in the environment and world around you. And I call that being still. So whenever you're confused, when you're not sure what to do, just be still. When you're not being still and you're trying to figure things out, you're like somebody covered in blood trying to clean a room. And all you're doing is moving the blood everywhere, painting everything red, staining everything. And when you relax, you stop doing that. And you realize everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. Everything's perfect, everything's okay. Everything is as it is. And then thought comes along, and perhaps thought comes along and tells us otherwise. But what about this? But what about that? And it will give you 101 reasons why you shouldn't be still. And many of those reasons are perfectly reasonable and logical. They make sense. And so they have power. 
because they make sense. But if you have a little bit of faith, just a little bit, just enough to ignore the thoughts and to remain still, you will start to realize how false and how flawed all those thoughts are. And while it has a logical consistency to it, while it makes the thoughts seem to make sense, they're actually wrong. Just because a theory makes sense doesn't mean it's right. I'll give you an example. The Earth, it used to be said, cannot be round because then the people who live in Australia would fall off the bottom. Wouldn't they? It makes complete sense. It's a completely sensical, logical argument. The Earth cannot be hurtling through space at some preposterous high speed because we'd all fall over, wouldn't we? We'd all feel it. It makes sense, doesn't it? So just because something makes sense doesn't mean it's true. And through being still, you don't have to believe any teacher or any teaching, you can discover everything for yourself. But what you do need is to be able to go all the way. Not just be a little bit still, because if you're, if you're a little bit still, that means you're also a little bit busy. The mind's a little bit there still. And the mind is the distorting factor. The mind is the distorting factor that gives rise to ignorance and suffering. So only in the depths of stillness is the mind no longer functioning. And then the ignorance can be seen for what it is, which is non-existent and false. And reality comes into focus by itself. So at these meetings, we have an opportunity to really relax into ourselves and sink down into the depths of ourselves. The mind, the ego wants to know all sorts of things. It wants all sorts of questions answered. On a superficial level, teachings may answer the questions. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to become enlightened. There you go. Is there a God? Yes. There you go, there's another answer. And there's so many other answers that teachers can give you on a superficial level, on a verbal level. Through being still, the answers come, but you never know the answers. What really happens is the questions dissolve, and the questioner, that entity that questions, 
also disappears. Or another way of putting it is the entity that questions is seen to be an illusion, a fiction. So in the silence, the questioner disappears. And when the questioner disappears, not superficially, but in the depths of silence, so not just the superficial aspects of the questioner, not just the superficial aspects of thought, but the whole structure of thought, the whole momentum behind it, the whole energy behind it, starts to quiet and down. And then reality reveals itself. There's a metaphor used in Hindu scripture of the clouds. And when the clouds part, the sun shines. You don't have to, then, you don't have to part the clouds and then turn on the sun switch the sun on, no. The, the, when the clouds part, the sun is automatically manifested. And when the thoughts quieten down, deeply quieten down, the truth reveals itself. There's nothing but the self. The self is you. And what do you need to do to discover you? All you've got to know is that you exist. And everybody already knows they exist. And then all you've got to do is remove the false ideas. These are the clouds. These are the thoughts. This is the mind, the ego, the ignorance. And a nice, simple way of doing it is just to relax. To relax and not fall asleep. To relax and be aware. So you can take refuge in this. If ever you're, in, you're having trouble with anything, you can just take refuge in silence, in stillness, in reality. And the refuge is taken by letting go, letting go of everything. Letting go of your thoughts and letting go of your concept of who you are. Letting go of yourself. And when you let go of yourself, meaning your idea of who you are, that's what you're letting go of. You're letting go of your ideas. You can never really let what you can try and let go as much as you like, but you can never let go of who you are because it's who you are. So what you let what you let go of will always be what is false. You, it's impossible to let go of what is true. Because the beingness, the sat it's just ever present. Now, typically, most people think of themselves as a body and a mind, the body mind entity. And this concept 
has to go. As long as you think you're the body mind, you'll suffer. And you can try and convince yourself that you're not the body mind. But what often happens is that you end up just being a body mind who's trying to convince themselves they're not a body mind. So the illusion can perpetuate. But through deep stillness, the body-mind concept can evaporate. So let's be still. If you want, you can focus on the breath or the sensations in your body. With practice, the energy in the body will start to quieten down. But if you've got a very busy mind, it will take time and you've got to be patient. Just like it takes time to acquire any number of skills, it can take time to get used to being quiet. So have patience. But keep on coming back to it because the mind is very tricky and very canny and it will find excuses and reasons to not be still. So I'll do this first or I'll do that first, then I'll be still. Or the mind will say something like, Oh, he doesn't really mean be still. He means do this or do that. Well, the mind will say, maybe I'll read a bit more about this stillness first. Maybe I'll watch a few more YouTube videos or read a few books about being still. And then once I've learned a bit more about the stillness, then I'll be still. So watch out for these tricks. <laughs> 